and we're going to get started. So hello and welcome everyone to our Lunar New Year event called The Secret of the Red Envelopes. Um, today, I heard that, you know, it being day three of the Lunar New Year, and maybe Jeffrey and Doris can help me out later, but it's actually something called Red Mouth Day, apparently. And it said that there, there might be more arguments today. I don't know if that's going to happen here or not. I hope not. But uh, if you do have, if you did have some kind of interesting interaction today, you know, just pop it in the chat and let us know so that we can, we can, you know, see what's going on. Now, if you do have any questions today during the event, uh, put them in the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen or in the chat and we'll get to a Q&A at the end of the evening. So let's get started. Uh, welcome to the Lunar New Year event. And I am super excited for today's event because we're gonna be learning all about the traditions of Lunar New Year with Jeffrey Wong with the Wong's Benevolent Association, who's gonna show us also how to make a, ch a chun yup, a Chinese New Year snack tray. And we have the wonderful Doris Chow from the Youth Collaborative for Chinatown to let us in on the secrets of those little red envelopes. So my name is Kenny Tanaka and I'm the Programming and Learning Event Coordinator for the Vancouver Public Library. My colleague and friend Diane is also here with us today and she's gonna be helping out with the chat. Now, before we begin, I would like to acknowledge that we will be host or that we are hosting this event from the ancestral and unceded territories of the Musqueam, the Squamish and the Tsleil-Waututh Nations. Now, organizations often do land acknowledgements, but what other actions can we do to make a difference? So one of my favorite resources is from the University of Alberta and it's a free massive online course that you can take at any time. And Diane's gonna share the link for you in the chat. Okay, so as I mentioned before, at the bottom of your chat, there's a little blue button and you can change that to everyone so that we can all see your conversation and that you can share some of your Lunar New Year traditions with us as well. You can also put comments in the chat um, and you know your questions in the Q&A. So let me introduce our guests for today. Jeffrey Wong was born and raised in Vancouver and is a passionate history buff. He is the vice president of the Wong's Benevolent Association and volunteer archivist for the association. He helped reactivate the historic Myung Mon Kyung classroom at the association in partnership with the Youth Collaborative for Chinatown to offer Cantonese Saturday School. Doris Chow co-founded the Youth Collaborative for Chinatown with her sister and others to practice and share and celebrate the living culture and heritage of Vancouver's Chinatown. Their award-winning programs, Hot and Noisy Chinatown Mahjong Social and Vancouver Chinatown Cantonese Saturday School connect people and place across generations in experiential ways. Doris is big on tradition and dreams of learning how to cook a full Lunar New Year meal. Her favorite dishes are white cut chicken and ningo. Please welcome them both to the stage and I'm gonna let you both take it away. Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Wong from the Wong's Benevolent Association. And um, today I'm here to teach everyone how to make a chun hub as, uh, as Candy uh, politely said, that um, it's one of these. It's, oh, it's blurry. It's blurring. Oh well, <laughs> technical issues. Um, but it's a it's a candy tray that um, Chinese people normally put out during the, the holidays for their guests because a lot of the times family and friends would come over to each other's houses and you have to have a spread out uh, to serve your guests with tea and snacks. So in mine, I put um, candy lotus fruit, candied um, uh, lotus seeds, some candies, some chocolates some melon seeds. Um, they all have some meaning, but most of the time it's, uh, the sweets are just for a nice and happy, sweet new beginning to your new year. Um, so yeah, traditionally this would be either in a wooden or a plastic container, but because Chinese New Year's you get so many of uh, these things, the red envelopes, that um, it'd be good to uh, recycle them and make a tune up. So I think we should get started if Candy could cue the video. Hello, I'm Jeffrey Wong from the Wong's Benevolent Association, and today we're making a chun hup, or a Chinese New Year snack tray, out of red envelopes. Let's get started. A chun hup, or 
Tray of Togetherness is a serving tray that typically has eight compartments and is used for serving sweets to guests during Lunar New Year celebrations. This tray can be made of many different types of material, but today I will be showing you how to make a five compartment tray out of lucky red envelopes or paper. For this project, you will need tape and double-sided tape, scissors or a craft knife, and four red envelopes. The first step is to remove the envelope flaps with your scissors or craft knife. Red envelopes, or laisi in Cantonese, are used in many East and Southeast Asian cultures for giving monetary gifts during the holidays or spe special occasions. When you are done, set these aside for use in decorating your trays later. Next, we are going to cut each envelope so that it folds open into a square sheet. Cut one long side and the bottom. Repeat this step for each envelope. We are going to lay the four sheets next to each other to make one big square. Using your regular single-sided tape, stick the sheets together. It's okay for your sheets to overlap a little. Depending on the dimensions of your envelopes, you may or may not have a perfect square. In my case, I have made a big rectangular sheet. To make a square, fold your sheets over diagonally and cut off the excess. Now you should have a square sheet. Fold your square diagonally both ways to score your sheet with an X. Now taking one corner, fold it into the center point. Repeat this for all the corners. Taking the corners again, fold it back to the meet the edge of the sheet and repeat this for all the corners. Flip your sheet over and taking one side, fold it in to meet the center line and repeat this for the opposite side. You now have scored two vertical lines. And repeat this step for the two other sides so that you have two horizontal lines. In each corner of our paper, we have scored lines that will make the next part easier. Holding the corners, pinch it inwards following the line. Pinch the sides together, repeat this step for each corner. Now we are starting to see the box shape. Flipping your box around, pinch the corners inwards following the line scored in the paper. Fold your box in one way and then repeat folding it in the other way to make an X shape. Now we are going to open the compartments of the tray. Gently pry open the flaps and press the paper open. Repeat this for each compartment Notice the shape of the box is like a Chinese coin. 
Using the double-sided tape and envelope flaps saved from earlier, tape these into the inner corners as decoration. And there you go! I filled up my candy tray with candy lotus roots symbolizing abundance year after year, chocolate coins covered in gold foil as a symbol of wealth and good fortune, good luck candy for a sweet life, lotus seeds symbolizing many offspring and melon seeds symbolizing fertility. You can fill your tray of togetherness with these traditional symbolic treats or with any sweets of your choosing. Happy Lunar New Year! So yeah, that was the tune up, the origami tune up. Um, I know it's fast, but uh, I'm sure it'll be posted on YouTube eventually. Uh, but this was my empty one. Oh, I think I should turn off the blurring thing. If I can center it, maybe it'll be better. Um, but this is my tune up. This is the one I made, another one I made, but it doesn't have the decorations on the side. But um, I use these long ones, these long red envelopes. Um, but you can also use the the shorter ones, but then your box will just be smaller. Um, and another note on the sides, um, to decorate them, these little flaps, you could either fold them, fold them up to make a little crease like that, or you could cut it off, or you could just completely fold it, fold it, and then make it red. So it's up to you, you just to decorate the box a little bit. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed. So yeah, I'll pass it off to Doris. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Jeffrey. Now, um, I know some of us have old, uh, lots of old red envelopes. Um, and these, this is a very handy craft to be able to make. Um, Uh, Doris, I think you might be on mute. Just learn her to hear. There you go. Yeah. You. Oh, are we good? Um, sometimes uh, Lunar New Year tends to be very Chinese centric, um, but I want to recognize that there are other countries and cultures that celebrate uh, Lunar New Year, including uh, Korean, Vietnamese, Mongolian, and others. Um, and I really invite all of you to share your Lunar New Year traditions from wherever you're from, new and old traditions. Um, and often people have different twists and uh, you know special things that you do for your own tradition. So feel free to share those. So we're talking about Lunar New Year, or we're talking about red envelopes. Um, there's actually a few different names for red envelopes. So as uh, Jeffrey mentioned, Laisi is one of them, and Laisi actually translates to, in Cantonese, um, is a very specific Cantonese term uh, for red envelopes, and is really about the good vibes of red envelopes. Um, so you're gifting red uh, good vibes to people. In Mandarin, uh, they are called Hongbao, which literally translates to red envelope. And Hokkien is called Angpao, so there's different names for these. But I also realized uh, from my Korean friends that they don't use red envelopes at all, even though they celebrate the New Year. So it's really, um, it depends on the different culture and, um, and practices. 
Um, red envelopes are often given during, uh, given an exchange during Lunar New Year, of course, to celebrate Lunar New Year, but it's also for birthdays, weddings, graduations, and other happy and congratulatory occasions. So um, sometimes aunties will, uh, smart aunties, will carry a red envelope in their purse or in their wallet for those just-in-case moments and have a, a stack of them ready on hand for any of those, uh, any occasion, not just for Lunar New Year. So often the question is always, who gets red envelopes? How do I get one? <laughs> and how much do you put in it? And what is the etiquette? So for who gives the red envelopes, um, there's a number of different factors like age, the uh, relationship to the person, and often marital status. So some of you may already know these. So generally it is someone from who's older giving a red envelope to someone who's younger. And uh, when by older, um, marital status tends to be the signifier as, um, as being um, uh, required to give uh, red envelopes to younger generations. Um, and it also depends on your relationships. So um, family, definitely uh, as the closeness of your, um, of, of the people in terms of, uh, in terms of um, who who gives so parents to children or grandparents to children and, and grandchildren um, and the um, but but it can also be in workplaces so for example a supervisor or a boss to employees um, but there is this hierarchical kind of structure um, so there's some I'm sure you may have seen some memes on social media around um, how to continue receiving red envelopes is to stay single. Um, and uh, yeah, um, for how much, um, it's usually a single banknote. Uh, you never put two banknotes and definitely no, no number containing four. So you would never put say two twenties in, in a red envelope. Um, it's always a five, a 10, a 20 or a 50 or even a hundred. Um, and again, the amount can, is uh, based around the relationship, the age, and even sometimes employment status. Um, so uh, for example, if, um, if someone is, uh, is younger, if, if I'm giving a, a red envelope to someone who's younger, um, if they are a student, I would give more, but if they're entering the uh, into new employment and they're earning their own money, you might taper that off a little to be a little less. Um, and the younger they are, uh, often the more we give. Um, but again, it depends on also the proximity of the relationship. Um, if it's direct family members, it would be most likely larger, um, but as, as uh, the relationship is further, it will be smaller. Um, so in the case of something like a supervisor to, or a boss to giving red envelopes to employees, it might be five or $10 to show appreciation. We also sometimes see red envelopes passed out in mass quantities. For example, if you've ever been to the Chinatown parade, um, you'll see politicians handing out red envelopes um, or at community centers when there's a Lunar New Year party. Um, and often this will contain a piece of candy or a piece of chocolate. And this is again, just for symbolic reasons um, for, um, for sharing happiness and, um, and good luck. I do, if you ever work at a community center or, uh, or with a politician where you're handling um, red envelopes or helping to stuff the red envelopes, because of course there's lots of them, um, the candy that's inside is sometimes very tricky. So for example, um, often you will have the red Lysi Paul, which is the ones that Jeffrey had included in his tune hub. Um, or sometimes you see Werther's because of the gold wrapper. Occasionally you will see uh, chocolate coins, which was also in uh, Jeffrey's tune hub. 
Um, but sometimes I'm a little turned off by those, to be honest, because you put them in your pocket, you forget about it. And then next thing you know, you have a melted mess in your pocket from your red envelope that you just received. So I may be on those, but it's up, always up to you, of course. Um, and in terms of the etiquette, there's some subtleties around the act of giving and receiving um, red envelopes. The bills are always crisp. And you will see people lining up at the bank um, in order to get fresh, new, crisp bills to put into the envelopes. Rarely are they folded or crumpled. When you give and receive a red envelope, you always give with two hands. It's a sign of respect. You never, never throw someone a uh, or toss a red envelope to someone. That is considered very rude. Um, and you also never check the amount before giving or receiving. For example, if I have a number of uh, um, nieces and nephews that I'm uh, giving um, red envelopes to on the same day, they may be differing amounts based on our relationship or based on their age. I better remember which one has what value. I do you never look at them first and then give it to somebody. And similarly, when you receive the envelope, you never open it to see how much you got. Again, very rude. And also be prepared. Um, you never want to receive an envelope and then have nowhere to put it. It's very rude to le just leave a red envelope on, that has just been gifted to you on the table and you know, just like, oh, I'll just leave it here for now. Um, sometimes uh, children will wear vests with pockets in them so that they have a place to put their red pockets. Um, and, or, you know, once you receive it, you say thank you with often with a um, with a well wishes like San Taiki Hong or suddenly Bai Lok. Um, and then you put it away for safekeeping. That's a sign of respect. You don't generally fold the envelope and stuff it into your pocket. I'm kind of iffy about even putting it in your back pocket. I feel like that's a little cringeworthy. Um, in some cases, I have also encountered situations where seniors show, trying to show a lot of gratitude uh, give me a, um, a red envelope that ends up being a little too big, where maybe I helped a senior with something, translate a letter, for example, um, and they end up giving me, say, like a $50 gift, uh, red envelope which is way too big for an acquaintance, um, someone who's not family um, for doing something very small. But of course, you don't see it when you when it's given to you. So once I once you take it home and you realize, oh my goodness, this is way too much and you feel really bad, it just doesn't feel like the right amount. You can always actually go back and say, thank you so much. This was very generous of you. It's actually um, too much of an amount. I, how about we exchange it for, and, and you know, it's just about the meaning. So how about just exchange it for a five or $10 bill? And um, sometimes that works, <laughs> but you can do that as well. So it's not refusing the red envelope. It's showing respect that it's, oh, it's too big. And you're, you have their interest at heart. Um, over time, the red envelope has changed drastically. And I didn't realize this until I looked at my stash of, of red envelopes. So in the middle here, uh, top middle, you see these smaller red envelopes um, and with these sticky closures that you would are meant to lick to close. And um, those are very old <laughs> style of, um, of red envelopes where you would have to fold the bills a couple times to stuff inside and then lick the envelopes. Nobody uses those anymore. Then we started, they started graduating to wider, uh, but still um, wider envelopes where you might be able to fit a bill that was folded in half, um, such as the one on the uh, right hand of the screen here. Um, and then eventually uh, people started doing longer style envelopes where you don't have to fold the bill at all. Um, and that accommodates the full length of the bill without any kind of crumpling or folding. And on, uh, you also start to see closures to the red envelopes that are more uh, 
tucking in and, and um, or seals where you don't have to lick at all, which is obviously not COVID safe, but, um, but it's, it's a cleaner look, if you will. Um, and there's no sticky mess when you're trying to pry them open. Um, there's also a lot of banks. Uh, you will see this. So there's the HSBC and TD and um, uh, a lot of banks, when you go to exchange your bills, they will, if you ask them, they will also have red envelopes for free for you to take. And of course, we're in the, uh, we're in the age of technology and um, I have never received one of these but I have uh, seen and heard of people receiving and giving um, virtual red envelopes by uh, often by, by WeChat or other uh, Alipay or something. Um, and of course, like, um, like a lot of things, kind of like e-cards where there's a little graphic that shows up and it's happy and it's gold or red and it's, it can be customized. Um, and you just receive a virtual red envelope that gets taken out of your bank account and put into somebody else's automatically. So there's no even cash exchange anymore, which I find very fascinating. And of course, with the, um, with the spread of, um, of, of the knowledge of red envelopes and the, the, um, the sharing of this piece of culture, um, there's, of course, the commercialization of the red envelope. Um, so I found um, a number of high-end brands like Burberry, Porsche, Fendi, Lamborghini, Hermes, that actually design a special red envelopes every single year and put them in these elaborate boxes, very highly designed, very and, and very like almost collectible um, state um, for purchase and sometimes to gift to people of, you know, with their newly bought Porsche or Fendi bag, um, which I thought was very interesting, but this, um, around this commercialization um, of the red envelope and all the different designs that, that come with it. So, yeah. Um, that's, there we go. Here we are. We're all back on stage now. Okay, I'm going to show off my candy box because I did make one. Ooh. Obviously not. <laughs> obviously not that in the time that we watch the video because I am not that adept. You know, I had. Uh, but the video will be available on YouTube on our YouTube channel that was shared in the chat, so you can access it. I think it'll be there right after this the program ends, so you can check it out. Because I do have to say, I did have to watch it a couple times myself. You know, and then I thought, well, it's probably just me, you know, I'm just not very good with this or, you know, origami like paper folding. But I have to say, I did get these coconut candies. I don't know if you guys have had these ones. Those are my favorite. Oh, my goodness. Right, Doris? Yes. They're so delicious. Yes. I'm not, I am also not so stoked on the, uh, you know, the gold coins. It's a little, a little waxy kind of chocolate for me. Yes. But I did get these sort of like um, peanut crisps, which are also very delicious. And I got a, of course, the traditional, you know, strawberry uh, candy. Um, and then I got a, a ginger one as well. So mine is not, you know, as as traditional as Jeffrey's with the lotus root and the the other things. But I did manage to make one. <laughs> the lotus root are, are very hard to find these days. <laughs> exactly. This year has been particularly hard because of COVID. Everything was stuck at the port, and they couldn't get them off the ships. So you couldn't find a lot of the things that were in Jeffrey's um, chain house, actually. <laughs> oh, that's so interesting. Wow. There's only a few stores in Chinatown that carried them. So yeah. you, you have to hunt them down real, real. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be in the know to know where to go. Um, yeah, there, yeah. there are a few questions here in the chat. Uh, Vanya is wondering, does the boss need to be married to give red envelopes? No, no, no. It's um, is that like if you're a boss, you could you could you could give red envelopes to your to your employees, um, similar to as Dora said, like some some older older elders would give red envelopes to like people that serve them, like a waiter waiter or waitress around that time, um, regardless if they're married or not, or if, regardless if they have any relations. 
So, so what about the single thing, the single meme that's going around where we've all seen the little kid, you know, the little, slightly older kid, yeah. the teenager, and then the fully grown adult, you know, in line. I mean, do red envelopes only go to single people or, or I mean, what's, what's the, what's the, what's the deal here? Tell us. <laughs> that's the bane of my life. Cause as a single person, <laughs> it's awkward when someone comes up to me and says, Gong hei fa choy, and then I'm just sitting there be like, yes, you too. <laughs> I'm not married yet. So I don't have to give you any money. <laughs> um, but it, it, yeah, it Doris. depends up in the context as well. So if it's family, like at a family dinner, then it's the marriage, the marital status and age that comes first. But if you're in the workplace and the relationship is boss or supervisor to employees, I could be, I could own my own company, for example, and give red envelopes to everyone and they could be seniors too. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like very contextual, <laughs> which makes it very confusing, of course. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Some, sometimes it's like um, wh- when they provided you a service too. I, I know in like Hong Kong, a lot of random people would show up during Chinese New Year's, like janitors and security guards to your building or to your office, and they'll show up and, congr- and wish you a happy new year uh, in hopes of getting red envelopes. <laughs> And so do they put their hand out as they're wishing you happy new year? Oh, they, they do this. They do this. They do, uh, they do this. And then the... you're expected, you're expected to just like pull one out. <laughs> but it, it leads to a lot of, um, the story that I hear is that a lot of people bay lead, which is to avoid the year. So a lot of owners would take vacations and uh, during Chinese new year. So they could avoid giving a lot of these red envelopes. Okay, interesting. And the, what's the traditional amount for like, in, to give an employee? Do you said was it $5 or like a single a single bill, I guess, or maybe um, a 20? Can you hope for a 20? <laughs> 20 might be a little bit. Yeah, I, I think it also depends on um, how long, well, the number of employees there are. So if you have like a factory of people, then maybe $2, $5 is enough. But if there's like five employees and you are a really profitable business, (laughs) um, then maybe it's $10 or, or even 20, Mm -hmm. um, 20 still seems, feels like a lot. (laughs) Yes, it does. But then you're, you mentioned you got a 50. So at at one point, Oh, (laughs) (laughs) I got a 50 from a senior who was very, very appreciative of a service that I provided. Um, but I got home and I was like, oh my goodness, this is, this is way too much. Um, and I had just met him not too long ago uh, before receiving this. And so June actually was the one who, who coached me <laughs> around, oh, you just bring it back. And you say, no, no, thank you so much. It, it's very generous of you, but it's too generous. I'll just take a five or ten dollar and it worked oh okay, it definitely worked yeah yeah so <laughs> they weren't too stubborn about it <laughs> <laughs> and how long does the the red envelope get sort of gift exchange last like does it go on from the whole period of of the beginning of the lunar new year to like 15 days after or yeah it's normally the 15th day that's how long the chinese new year's celebrations go for um a lot of people just ended on the, not a lot of people, but these days people either ended on the third day after or the week after, but traditionally it's 15 days after. Okay. Okay, good. Uh, Raymond has a comment here. He says there was a new trend pre-COVID where families would go on trips to save from giving out the red envelopes. Oh, actually, he says, oh, Jeffrey just said that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm just like trying to catch up here. Um, someone's asking, oh, this is a good question. Uh, I was just asking, is it acceptable to gift a red envelope to an Asian friend if the giver is not Asian? Yeah, yeah. it's all about the generosity and the, the thoughts. But mm-hmm. Yeah, I would say that's okay. Yeah. I would welcome that friend, actually. <laughs> <laughs> How do I make friends with this person? <laughs> that's right. Anytime someone wants to give me a red envelope, I'm okay with it. I think I think <laughs> I can handle this. <laughs> yes. 
Uh, Jeannie is asking, did you say earlier it should only be a single bill in the envelope, but then it's okay to put $2 bills inside, like two $5 bills? As in 10? Uh, I think you said a single bill, didn't you? One single bill. So, um, yeah, one, one five, one ten, one twenty, one fifty, one hundred. I don't know if bills even go higher than that, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but it's one single bill yeah so you gotta you gotta pick and like you mentioned too that they should be bills well usually they're bills that the people want to get that are fresh from the bank that don't have any wrinkles okay is that some sort of lucky tradition or something i don't think so i think it's mostly because you just want a lot of you just need to get a lot of bills for christmas uh, for uh for chinese new year's <laughs> I guess maybe it looks newer and more respectful. I was just thinking about um, the the like the plasticky bills that we have now. How much of a pain it is when you get one from the grocery store, or like you get one and it's like folded in half and half, and it's like, how do I flatten this out? <laughs> it would drive me nuts. It would drive me nuts. <laughs> so no. <laughs> I'm sorry, because I do that to put them in my wallet. I'm the quarter. I fold oh. it in half and then I do a quarter and then look at Jeffrey's face. Oh, you're a monster. <laughs> you're a monster. Totally, I know. I, I feel so called out. I feel really called out. <laughs> just not for lunar, just not for red envelopes. <laughs> okay, that's good. Not for red envelopes. Okay, now Walter does mention that there are $1,000 bills, Doris. I, I, I mean, wow. Some of us wow. haven't seen them, but you know, Walter, he's, he, I, I'm glad he's mentioning that because it is, it is true. Amy says, should the bills be an even amount? So like, I guess is 10 better than five or? Jeffrey? I think normally, yeah. The even amount is uh, always the lucky number. Um, but because we're in Canada, we don't have, Two dollar bills or whatnot or anymore. Um, the lowest amount is five. So if it's a very distant person, we kind of like, oh, we'll just go with five rather than a five and a loony or a five and a toony or something. No, actually, not a five and toony. Never a seven. Uh, but um, yeah, so ten would probably be the best if okay. you're financially able to give ten to like someone like an acquaintance or like a, say someone you don't really know very well. I mean, there's inflation and stuff. So yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but like traditionally, even people that open the doors for you, like little kids that open the doors for you, you have to give them a red envelope. <laughs> so, mm, yeah, five. He's just pointing out that her mom used to iron the bills to make them crisp. <laughs> so that sounds like a very Asian boss. thing to do, doesn't it? Very boss. She knows what um, she's doing. <laughs> now, do some. Uh, Betty has a question, and she's asking: Do some people give to the very el their very elderly parents? My friend was asking me this the other day, and she, uh, who's Vietnamese, and her mom was saying, "Well, I'm getting older now. You have to start giving me Lacey. And I was like, "Is that a thing? I don't know." <laughs> I do know that um, when it's uh, very um, elderly people who wear and it's their birthday, that it is customary to give a red envelope to to the birth the, the elderly person whose birthday it is. But we're talking like at least eighty years old, <laughs> like like a happy happy birthday, you know, where it's like they're elderly. Yes, even ninety. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> but for Lunar New Year, I don't know. Please tell uh, me it's not true, so I don't have to give it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, right. That's true. <laughs> we're, we're so behind. Uh, Grace is saying that her mother prefers to give envelopes in pairs. So does that mean, I guess, two envelopes to one person? Okay. Mm -hmm. That's also a good thing, Grace. We, we need to, like, you know, make that a tradition. Um, I was just wondering, can you <laughs> <Yeah. Does she laughs> like just... to play mom's <laughs> <laughs> I was just wondering if you can give coins. I know that when I was young, I used to just get coins. I used to get like a quarter. Um, and then it was funny because the quarter 
uh, you know, it was kind of at the table and then they would always, the, one of the challenges was if you could pick it up with your chopsticks. I don't know if you guys ever did that, but okay. that's what my uh, uncles and grandparents were like. They, you know, they were like, okay, try and pick it up with your chopsticks now. And you know how hard that is for like a kid, right? So that was interesting. It kept me busy anyways. <laughs> so I think you can give coins. Is that right? You can, but I haven't seen that because of inflation. I haven't seen that in a while, but they do the really old, old envelopes. They have them in little, little, tiny, tiny, tiny envelopes, red envelopes. Um, and that is for coins, um, like, a, like $2 and one and up. But um, I haven't seen that in ages because of inflation. But sometimes you get, like, as Doris mentioned in her, some wealthy, wealthy politicians or, or community members, when they pass out their uh, red envelopes, there'll be like either a toonie in there Never a loony. Loony is not good, but a toonie. <laughs> and Leslie's wondering why never seven? Oh, seven is a, it's, it's the number for uh, like a funeral. So seven, seven is not a nice number. It also sounds like um, in seven is just the number for death. So it's not, it's not good. It's not lucky for Chinese New Year's. And it's an odd number. That's, and Adrian is, is, has mentioned that this is the first time that they've heard of using a single bill, which is interesting. Her mother makes sure the amount ends in an eight, which means using a, a few coins, I guess. That's okay, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Eight, eight is always welcome. Yes. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's about uh, auspiciousness, so. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, well, Vivian mentions also four is not a good number. And do you guys know much about the demon Sue that uh, oh. talks about the, the sort of story that's associated with that? Yeah, uh, I think it's, yes, yeah, I think in Cantonese it's so, uh, soy. I soy? think it's so, okay. soy in Cantonese. Um, and it's like the, the, the New Year's demon or evil creature that came out and terrorized villagers. So that's why Chinese New Year's, there was firecrackers and lion dance to scare them off. Um, and he only came out during Chinese New Year's for some strange reason. <laughs> Is this the same one that tries to steal your red envelopes? Or was the, there's something about putting uh, the red envelope and sleeping it on sleeping on it? Yeah, no, that the red envelope is to ward off the spirits. The red envelope. Oh, with a coin, with a $2 coin in it. Uh, so in Chinese New Year's Eve, uh, the parents would give two red envelopes with um, a toonie in each one of them. Actually, no, sorry. Uh, you just use one envelope. I'm, I sleep with two pillows, so I get two red envelopes. Uh, but, <laughs> <laughs> but in each pillow, you put one red envelope with a, a, a coin in it. And the coin is supposed to ward off the soy monster. And you're supposed to give that out during Chinese New Year's Eve to, um, and it's called a, uh, oh, not so chicken. And it's to mean um, to hold down the soy monster money. I remember sleeping on red envelopes, but I don't remember the story. <laughs> I remember sleeping, like having to put them in my pillow and then the next morning they'll be gone because it's under the bed or like thrown across the room or, <laughs> yeah. Let's see here. I don't think we, I mean, does anyone else have any other questions for, oh, here we go, or comments. Um, Jeannie mentions when, when her aunt turned 80, the red lycee was given to everyone with 80 cents in coins inside. Oh. Oh, interesting. To end with eight, I guess. Hmm. I've never heard of that, but that sounds fun. Yeah, <laughs> that would that would be a lot of that would be a lot of coins. Yeah, <laughs> like th three quarters and a nickel. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, you would really have to go to the bank to get all those uh, coin rolls, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. Um, and you have to like keep them facing up, or else like they would like slosh around. And sometimes these those little plastic seals never really seal very well. <laughs> I don't think those plastic ones work at all. I mean, I'm all for the paper ones, but then yeah. it is it is quite a procedure to you know it takes an afternoon if you have if you have a few <laughs> if you yes. have quite a few coins for sure. 
Um, does anybody else share? Does anybody else want to share any of their Lunar New Year traditions? You can just pop it in the chat box, or if you have any other questions for uh, Doris or Jeffrey, feel free to let us know. Um, and like I mentioned, the video will be available afterwards. You can watch it on our YouTube channel, and then you can make your candy box. Lewis has mentioned uh, putting your lice in a safe place. Can you tell me where my parents put them <laughs> for safekeeping? <laughs> in the bank. Well, <laughs> <In> the bank. <laughs> Basically, I mean, of when, you know, because as a child, you would receive all these lice, and then that's like the start of your savings account. <laughs> Essentially, when you finally get to or you're old enough to open a bank account, that's that's your first deposit, your all your lices, yeah, your education fund. And yeah, I realized I had a few lying around just because like if you receive a $50 bill, people don't really generally pull out $50 bills. So it's like, it's kind of special to spend it. Or if you go to a restaurant or, you know, bakery or something, if you pay for it, the crisp 50, <laughs> they're always like, did you get this from your lice? <laughs> Did you open your license? <laughs> <laughs> so they, they just kind of like accumulate. And next thing you know, oh, this is a pretty good, you know. <laughs> hefty hey, we have a few more questions here, which is great. Uh, let's see here. Sophia is wondering if you have any recommendations for traditional New Year's food in Vancouver. I'm sure you both do. Or June does. And and or June does <laughs> <laughs> traditional New Year's food. I I normally know of the the because normally for my Chinese New Year's I do the ancestors worship stuff or like all that stuff. So it's normally chicken, white chicken, um, roast pork, fish. Oh, that weird seaweed hair thing. That hair. <laughs> what do you call oh, it? Fa choy, yeah, fa choy, but I don't know what's called in English. Um, that hair thing. <laughs> it's a moss that resembles hair. Oh. Sounds delicious. Um, <laughs> that we normally only eat it around Chinese New Year's because it's fa choy, as in fortune vegetable, fortune toy. I don't know. Um, so, yeah, fa choy, but yeah, it's. I, I haven't had that in a while. I think Pauline is just calling it moss. So moss, I think okay. <laughs> the hair moss. And June says fat, fat choy, fat choy, moss. Yeah, hair fat moss. choy is a Ty says fat choy is a fungus. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, they normally mix it with like mushroom and like bok choy. Yeah, it's like the Buddha's feast. Yes, the the vegetarian dish that you eat on New Year's Day. So you have your really big, luxurious, meaty dishes um, on New Year's Eve, and then New Year's Day, um, or our, we found out from our mom that they eat um, their Buddha's feast at midnight um, oh. growing up uh, after going to the flower, um, the flower festival and play card games and stuff and, and with the family, and then they, at midnight, they eat vegetarian Buddha's feast. <laughs> <laughs> for me, it's New Year's Day. So that yeah. for the whole day, we'll do vegetarian, which is Buddha's feast all day. <laughs> and what about now? Is there any special foods that you should be eating in the, like the, the 15 days that are the, what is it, the 12 days that are left, I guess, now? Now, for me, it's eating the leftovers. <laughs> so we're eating all <laughs> the leftovers. <laughs> A lot and of being love grateful. For, yeah, being <laughs> grateful. Um, now specifically, like yeah, leading the leftovers: chicken, pork, fish, whatever you have to for your ancestors. Um, trying to think of anything else. Oranges. Eat all the oranges. So many oranges. So oranges. Yes. I love the mango. Mango oh, is yeah. like my favorite. Yes. You can only get it during this time of year and they sell out by generally by New Year's Day. And then mm -hmm. you, we always eat it on New Year's Day. And 
you slice it up and fry or dip it in, in an egg wash and then fry it and it's crispy on the outside and like super soft and gooey on the inside. It's so good. I ate I ate a whole one to myself the other day. I was on such a sugar high. It's is dense. That, is that some kind of New Year's cake or something? Is that yeah? Uh, it's okay. a sweet rice cake. Okay. It's it's quite sweet. It's mm. really dense. It's really heavy. <laughs> Way to go, Doris. Um, <laughs> Leslie's asking if the size of the red envelopes changed to match North American dollars, or was it for another reason? No, I don't think so. I don't, know. I don't think no. so. No, I think just, not. I just think they uh, they so that you don't have to fold it. A lot of people didn't like the nice crisp dollars, uh, crisp bills. A lot of people wanted the crisp bills. Um, compared to the, the old time where they used to fold them in the smaller ones. Yeah, I no, don't understand. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't like the idea of fold, them needing to fold the envelope to put it somewhere. Oh, yeah. I just find that to be really rude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so then if you're carrying around these big, uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's probably aesthetic. It's just aesthetic. <laughs> they got to change it up every thousand years. Yeah. <laughs> Alan mentions that this is all new to him. He's a multiracial American who grew up in Texas and became aware of Lunar New Year just three years ago. And so he's here to learn some more, which is great. Yeah. And Natasha's wondering if this was a question I had too. Natasha's wondering if there's a timeline for how long you should leave the money in the red envelopes. It's like, I heard, I think when I was a kid, I heard that the longer the better, but I mean, that could be just like one of those things they tell kids. I don't know. <laughs> So that you won't know what's inside because it yeah. keeps out. <laughs> <laughs> I still have some from years ago. <laughs> um, I would say after the 15th, when New Lunar New Year's is done, after the 15th day, after the first day of the Lunar New Year. You shouldn't open it until, until after that time? Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Um, that makes sense. Uh, Vivi the first three days. Okay. Uh, Vivian mentions that uh, she remembers when one receives a red envelope that you should not open it in front of the giver, right? I think that's, yeah, yeah that's definitely. Oh, <laughs> here's a good question in the, in this uh, day of, uh, you know, mass consumerism. Is it okay to re-gift red envelopes? Yeah. You can I reuse think. the envelope, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I feel like it would be weird to re-gift the money too. But... <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you mean like, just like pass were... it along? <laughs> If I receive a fifty a, a red red envelope of fifty dollars, I'm like, oh, that's how much I'm going to give my nephew, and then just like pass it over to him. I don't know. That feels weird to me for some reason. Mm. But the, reusing the envelope is fine. Yeah, yeah, I think that that makes sense. Um, but Winston, it can't, it can't look crumpled though. Oh, yeah. I do have a story about that because oh. I had somebody where at a birthday, it was my birthday, and I had a dinner at a restaurant, and an auntie, my mom's friend. She didn't know it was my birthday and she found out at the dinner table and she started scrounging around for, for a red envelope to give me. And then she had one in her wallet, but it was so like the edges were kind of like, you know, that frayed, like it's red, but it's like kind of turning white or it's discolored and stuff. No. <laughs> <laughs> and she, and she, that was all she had. So she gave it to me and it was like, all right. <laughs> I mean, I got the red envelope, of course, but be careful of, you know, reusing it so many times that it looks just old and tired. Mm. Mm -hmm. Then Winston is asking, why don't people eat beef during New Year's? Do people not? Yeah, uh, beef, it kind of follows Buddhism where it's like a sacred animal. So a lot of times the uh, people don't eat beef to follow along Buddhist traditions because the cultures have been intermixed so for thousands of years. Um, yeah, that's why. Um, Kai mentions that uh, their family would serve braised fat choy with shiitake mushrooms and lettuce. This, this, all this food stuff is just making me hungry. That's why I was asking, what should I get for, for dinner later? Um, Grace <laughs> mentions that uh, they would eat vegetarian chai, chai? Mm -hmm. she, uh, yeah, for breakfast on New Year's morning. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Walter says, for wedding lie, see, if I can find old paper, $50 bills. Oh, they fold them into hearts. That's so cute. Aww. <laughs> Very sweet. Yes. Okay, so as, as asking about the red envelopes, you you know, wondering if, if they can make them or buy them from the dollar store. So I think you can do either or. Yep. Um, there's some really old ones that's just made out of red paper. Some The red paper that people write calligraphy on. I seem just fold them into envelopes. So just any as long as it's red. Do not use Joss paper. Don't use you do. Don't use Joss paper. There there have been too many things happening this year of snafus like that. Oh yes. Joss paper is red and gold, but that is for the deceased. Yes. (laughs) Do not you can use rice paper though. Rice paper is fine. Oh. (laughs) That's rice paper. The calligraphy rice paper is fine. Just don't use Joss paper. Which okay, is we, way rougher. <laughs> we all agree, no Joss paper. And Joss paper you'll usually see in the in the stores that are and and um you can kind of tell because it's a little bit larger, isn't it? Like in larger rougher, like it feels very rough. Yeah, it's larger, there's gold. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's a very good tip. Um Winston is also mentioning, I remember as a kid, grandma didn't want us, didn't allow us to wash our hair before New Year's and New Year's Day. That's I think. The thing there was no there was you know a lot of those things that we shouldn't do um, oh. on uh, on New Year's Day. One of them was definitely cutting your hair, mm-hmm. I think, and one of them is is even what was it using scissors? I think was not a good thing. Um, I'm sure there was. I think even what was it washing dishes or something or washing or cleaning? Obviously, you're supposed cleaning. to do your cleaning before, yeah. Cleaning. Don't throw out the garbage. On Don't throw out the garbage. You're if you're However, if you have to sweep. Oh, sorry, Doris, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was like, if you have to sweep, like you're not allowed to sweep. But if you have to sweep, say you drop something, you broke it. Um, sweep into the house, not out of the house. Oh. Yes. Yeah. So when you That's sweep, perfect. you sweep from the door in. Don't sweep from the door out. Uh, out out of the door. Then you're pushing your bad luck or yeah. your good luck your out good the luck. door. Your yeah, good luck. <laughs> For the garbage, I the other day on New Year's Day, I heard the garbage truck come and I started freaking out. I was like, oh my god, they're just throwing out everybody's good luck. <laughs> I think that I think we had the same schedule. I think I heard the garbage truck as well. And I was thinking, does the city of Vancouver like not realize that why can't they schedule it to a different day? Like, this is not good. <laughs> Bad omen. <laughs> Bad omens. <laughs> And HW mentions, yes, they were taught to receive a red envelope with both hands. So do you give with both hands and receive with both hands? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then Betty Jung says, if you need a red envelope quickly for an event, you can ask the receptionist at a good hotel or restaurant, uh, but not at New Year's. Oh, that is a very good tip. We need to go to, I I obviously need to go to better hotels or restaurants because I I did not know this. So this is good to know. I, I feel like I'm, I, I need to make a list or something, like go to all the hotels and ask for them and see which ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who knew? Huh. That's interesting. Well, do you got, do you, oh, Natasha is saying, does the time zone matter for Lunar New Year's? Should we base the new year on a specific time zone? Asking as someone who does all the cleaning traditions to the last minute. I kind of feel this, Natasha. I was also cleaning still, I think, at 11.45 on, uh, on the day before New Year's Day. <laughs> I don't think the time zone matters. As long as you follow the whatever the calendar it is, whatever day it is at where you live, it's the day, whatever the day is. Okay, I think we're pretty safe. Oh, Natasha feels relieved now, so that's, that's very good. <laughs> I also feel relieved doing my last minute cleaning. Uh, Mm -hmm. 11.45. Well, I think unless um, Doris or Jeffrey, you have anything else you want to add? I think we can maybe wrap it up for the evening. Okay. Well, that was great. I I enjoyed that. I enjoyed your company, of course. And uh, thank you to everyone that was here tonight and for all your stories and for sharing with us. We appreciate it. So huge thank you again to Jeffrey and Doris. A big thanks to June as well from YCC for helping to organize this event. 
Of course, we can't forget June. And thanks to my colleague, Diane, for helping out tonight to keep the event running smoothly. So we would love to receive your feedback about this event as a public institution, we're here for you. So uh, Diane is gonna share a link to the feedback form in the chat, which will take you about a minute to fill out. Now there's one ex an event that I'm pretty excited about that's coming up soon for Black History Month around sports. And that's going to be available on our website soon. And it's happening on Thursday, February 24th from 12 to 1 p.m. PST for all you people that are elsewhere. We're gonna have Blake Bolden, who's the first African-American to compete in uh, the National Women's Hockey League. And who, she is also now a scout for the LA Kings. And she's gonna be joined by Rosie Edda, a three-time Olympian in track and field, who is now a news anchor for Global News. So stay tuned to our website and, you know, of course, our Facebook page and our social media, and that event's going to be posted soon. And we're going to share the link again. So if you want to watch this again, and of course, you know, we know you're going to want to watch it to make your own candy tray, because I'm telling you, like, seriously, how adorable is this, this you know, I mean, like I said, Jeffrey's is way more adorable than mine, but still, I had a good time making this. It was a lot of fun. I did have to watch it at least two or three times, you know, I know I'm, I'm a little bit slow anyways with these sort of like, you know, origami things and, and paper folding, but I really enjoyed putting that together. And it was so, it's, it's just so um, simple and fun and it looks lovely. And it's a great way to, you know, do something for Lunar New Year's. So thank you all for coming tonight. And we're going to leave the event open for a little bit longer in case you want to, uh, you know, um, share, or share any of those links, especially the YouTube channel, or if you want to um, take note of, you know, scroll back up, to see what uh, other people are talking about. So thank you again to Doris and Jeffrey and have you, uh, have, everyone have a great evening. I'm going to put the slides back up now. So take care. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everyone.